So anaerobic respiration is just glycolysis. And it's glycolysis when you've got no oxygen. The NADHs that you produce from glycolysis need to be regenerated back into NAD for the process of glycolysis to continue. In order for that to happen, it needs to go to the electron transport chain on the inner mitochondrial membrane. The electrons will be delivered, join with oxygen to produce water. Now, when you've got no oxygen, if you can't regenerate the NADs, then glycolysis cannot continue. If we have a glucose, it's going to get phosphorylated by two ATPs to give you a hexose biphosphate. It's going to split, give you two triosphosphates. This is just glycolysis. And then it's going to join with another inorganic phosphate to give you a triose biphosphate. And then this splits, oh sorry, after it's split, the two, A, the two phosphates come off and join to these two phosphates on that triose biphosphate. And these two come off and they join onto an ADP, another ADP, another ADP, and another ADP to give us a grand total of four ATPs. Now, four have gone, have been produced, two have been consumed in the phosphorylation step, so it gives us a net production of two ATPs. Additionally, and crucially, you have reduced an NAD to an NADH. A bit better than that. Here we go again, to an NADH. And this happens twice, one for each of the um, triodes biphosphates being turned into pyruvates. Now, as I said right at the beginning, what's going to happen to those NADHs and they're going to go off to the electron transport chain um, and the electrons are going to join on, on with oxygen to produce water in the end and then that's going to regenerate the NADs. Now the issue is that if you've got no oxygen this can't happen. So in order for glycolysis to continue you need an alternate way of regenerating the NADs. In bacteria and in humans, um, we take the NADH and it reduces the three carbon pyruvate to lactate or lactic acid. Now the advantage of that is that you can still carry on with glycolysis. So you can still do a net production of two ATPs. So under circumstances where you are unable to get in sufficient oxygen to meet the ATP expenditure, so explosive exercise, then at that point you would respire anaerobically and regenerate the NAD through sticking the electrons and hydrogens onto pyruvate to produce lactic acid. Now plants have got a different strategy, plants and yeast have got a different strategy, which is that they take the pyruvate and they decarboxylate it, they remove a carboxyl, a carboxyl group as carbon dioxide, and then they produce what's called ethanol. Now the ethanol then gets reduced by the NADH being regenerated to NAD, and that produces ethanol which is alcohol. So, final recap. Anaerobic respiration is just glycolysis with a different way of regenerating the NADs. You can either produce alcohol if you're a yeast or a plant or lactic acid if you're a human produces a net production of two ATPs, consumes glucose, 
does not produce any carbon dioxide, does not consume any oxygen, and ends up producing ethanol if you're a plant or a yeast, or lactic acid if you're a human. Thank you very much. Please subscribe if you found it useful.